Hello there, and welcome to this collection of notebooks and tutorials on machine learning for audio signals in Python. This is a course offered by Professor Schula at the Ilmenau University of Technology. I am Renato, the instructor for these online materials, and on this tutorial, we will talk about neural networks for classification. So, let's get started. We saw in neural networks for detection that they need to detect if a pattern is present or not. For the classification tasks, we have a class of patterns and we know that a pattern of one of the classes has to be present. The network has to decide which class. A classical application is the classification of handwritten digits. The network input are images of handwritten digits and each image belongs to one of the 10 digit classes, from 0 to 9. The network usually has as many outputs as classes, 10 in the digit example, and each output might represent the probability that the image at the network's input belongs to the corresponding class. Since we know that it must be one of the 10 digits, the probabilities must add up to 1. A classical database for this example is the MNIST database, the Modified National Institute of Standards and Technology database. And you can read about this database here on this Wikipedia page. This database contains 60,000 grayscale images of handwritten um, images of size 28 by 28 pixels. PyTorch has a function to directly access and download these images in the Torch Vision dataset MNIST. So, we will have now an example using PyTorch and using the MNIST dataset to use the neural networks as a classifier. So, you handle this problem of classification of handwritten digits. Let's start building up our PyTorch example. So we are going to use a data loader from the Torch Utils data to load the training set with 100 random images and target classes and we will test with uh, 10 random images and target classes. After loading and then reading the training set uh, with the next function, we can check the resulting data type with a print statement and with the type function. So this is what we're doing here. We'll just print and check the type of the resulting data. So we um, observe that we have a torch float tensor for the X train type and a torch long tensor for the Y train type. And X is our input and Y is our target. So observe that the input signals, the images, have the type of torch flow tensor, whereas the target, the correct digit uh, class indices, have the type um, torch long tensor. So this difference in types becomes important when we apply a loss function. Next, we also have another print line to check for the shape and content of our data tensors. So we see that we have for the train shape, it's 100 by 1 by 28 by 28, and we have our Y train shape is size of 100. So in the train uh, data, we have um, the first index is for the image, so we have 100 image. The second index, index is for the batch, it only contains one batch, and the two remaining index are for the pixel so we have 28 by 28 pixels 28 vertically and 28 horizontally on the uh, y train we shows that uh, we have for a target is a one dimensional rate of 100 entries it is one number the correct digit for each image this can also be seen uh, in the final part when we print, so we are printing our Y train and its numbers with digits from 0 to 9. So for each image, 20 by 8 a pixels image, then we have a target which is the correct digit that this image represents. 
Next, we have to define our new network as a class. And we will take two fully connected layers with bias and we use the value activation function only after the first layer. So this is what we are doing here. We are defining our neural network model and we have one layer with um, the input features is the number of pixels, in the case is 28, and the output uh, is 28 times 28, and the output features is also the number of pixels. Then we have another layer. Again, we have the input features is the number of pixels, but the output features is the number of classes. And here we are uh, defining our forward method. We have the first layer, then we have a value applied to the output of the first layer, then we have the second layer, and we are returning the output of the second layer. Here we choose the size of the hidden layer, so the output of layer 1, the same as the number of pixels as the input, but it could also be a different number. So our program will plot the first four images of the training set, and for that, we need to know uh, the meaning of the indices. For instance, for the second image in the set, we will plot the, using uh, imshow from pyplot and then xtrain 1, 0. And we use the gray uh, scale, a gray color map. So index 1 is the index of the image, and index 0 is for the current batch or set of images. So in our example, we only have batch zero, and then there are two uh, remaining indices to, to the right, which are not seen here, are the image pixel indexes. So one example we plot is we have here four um, digits. So this is how it looks like. And we see that we have from zero to 28 pixels, zero to 20 pixels, and it's a three, a three, a nine, and a one. So after showing the images, we can reshape or flatten them into a one-dimensional arrays to make them suitable as input to our fully connected linear layers. So uh, remember that the um, fully connected linear layers, they take uh, only uh, one-dimensional inputs. For that, we use the view function. So we are taking our images, that's... Uh, 28 by 28 and they have this shape that we define and we we see we saw here 101 28 and 28 and we are going to reshape using the view and then uh, here we see that the shape the first element of the shape is the number of images in the batch and we are so we are putting this as an argument and also the number of pixels is another argument for the view. Now observe that we don't need to reshape the target because it is already a one-dimensional array uh, with the correct classes. So after showing the images, the program is initialized in our uh, neural network model with this part here. And then we will define the loss function using the cross entropy loss. The cross entropy loss is made for classification tasks and it expects the data type uh, as a torch flow tensor from the 10 outputs of our neural network, which fits, and long tensor as the data type for the target data, which also fits. And you can go to the PyTorch documentation and search the website for the cross entropy loss, which is here, and you can find more details about its definition. It basically first applies a softmax function to the 10 outputs of our neural network and turns them into probabilities such that they always sum up to 1. It also applies a logarithm because that is part of the cross entropy calculation and to make the op optimization more precise for very small values. It also turns the target data into probabilities of 10 classes. It assigns the correct class a probability of 1 and the incorrect class a probability of 0. 
then it applies uh, cross entropy to those two resulting probability distributions. The cross entropy gives a measure about how different two probability distributions are. So we see here that the cross entropy between two distributions p of x and q of x over classes x is defined by this equation here and we have a minus the sum and we have a logarithm so here is the first distribution the second distribution and this is the cross entropy it can be interpreted as the number of bits needed to describe a second probability distribution based on a first probability distribution if they are identical then we need zero bits and we need and we minimize the cross entropy now p of x is our target distribution which is one for the correct class and zero elsewhere hence the sum degenerates to just a single sum for the correct class x equals to c and it becomes minus log of the probability q of c where q of c is the output of our network for the correct class c and you can see more about this on the book Introduction to Deep Learning by Eugene Charniak from the MIT Press. Hence, after training or optimization, the probability distribution of our network after softmax should be as similar as possible to the distribution of the target. When we apply the trained network, which is called inference as opposed to training, Instead of the softmax, we can simply take the argmax function, which returns the index with the largest output, or with the largest probability. So next, we will define the, opt the optimizer for the training, and in this case, we are going to use the ADAM. So, as before, ADAM is a popular and effective optimizer for neural networks, uh, for um, adaptive moments and it's a variation of stochastic gradient descent and you can see more about the ADAM optimizer in this link here. So in our case we will um, obtain a very fast optimization with only 10 epochs or iterations with the decreasing uh, loss function for example given here. Finally we will compute the loss on our test set of 10 images and we will see that uh, it's clearly worse than our training set. So here we um, reached 0 0.14, a loss in our training set, but on the test set we have 0 0.49. And we will also test the performance on an example image uh, from the test set at um, inference using the argmax uh, function. And it will show an image from the test set and it will predict the corresponding class. So, this is what we'll do. We will give it an image and we'll see what it predicts, what digit it's predicted. So, this is uh, just examples of a one run. Remember that we are not using seeds for uh, our random numbers in this case. So, every time we run the experiment, we will uh, get different results because we have different initialization of weights and bias and um, so you should also expect that you don't get these numbers they're just illustrative for how we're going to build our uh, PyTorch model and then we see that, um, that we will give it an image and the corresponding printout for from the prediction in this case was 8 so the network's predicting the input image belonging to a class 8. And the image is usually correctly classified. And we see that in this case, it is uh, more or less easy for a human to identify as an 8. But I would not be surprised if somebody thinks it's, it's a 9 or if the machine thinks it's a 9. So observe that the network always outputs a number for a digit, even when the image does not contain a digit. We can fix this introducing a class with a label no digit, for which we also will need training data, which 
makes it difficult. Here is our complete PyTorch example. So this is taken by machinelearningmastery.com. This is a great a source for examples and tutorials on machine learning. And it was translated to PyTorch and modified to a simply fully connected layer by Professor Shuda. So here we are importing our libraries. We will use NumPy, PyPlot to plot, PyTorch, Torch Vision to have access to the MNIST dataset. Then here we are defining the neural network model, like we explained before. We are defining two layers and we are using the ReLU activation after the first layer. So the input of the uh, first layer, it will be the number of pixels. The output of the first layer, also the number of pixels. The input of the second layer is the number of pixels. And the output of the second layer is the number of classes. Here, we are setting the batch size for training, batch size for testing, and the number of classes. And the 10 classes are um, according to each digit, and we have digits from 0 to 9. At this point here, we are loading our data set using a data loader. So this is how we um, are doing this. So um, the normalize arguments, they are the mean and standard uh, deviation. And here we also have now a train set and the test set. This is how we loaded our data set. Then we are also um, printing the shapes and the types of uh, the data inside the data set. So here we're just um, doing an example and we will plot four images. So we have this from the training set from zero to three. And this is what we are doing here. We are plotting these four images like here. So this could be a one, a seven, a nine, and a seven. And we see that's one, a seven, a nine, and a seven. So this is the type of the train, it's a flow tensor, type uh, of the target, this is the, the input, this is the target. Here we have our shapes, like we discussed before, and here we can see all the uh, classes of our target. So this is what we did in this part here. Then we are doing that the number of pixels is the shapes, so it's 28 times 28, so it's the shape 2 and shape 3, so we remember that we have a 100 was shape 0, then 1, 28 and 28, and this is what we're doing here. Then we are going to flatten the image, so we want not a two-dimensional uh, array 28 by 28, but we want a flat and we can also, um, if needed, we can also normalize the inputs from 0 to 255 or from 0 to 1. But in this case, uh, we are not doing this. It's not uh, needed. Then we move on to build the model. And our model is this dense net that we defined here. We are defining our loss function that we were going to use the cross entropy loss, and we're defining our optimizer that we're going to use the ADAM optimizer. Here we are training the model. We're going to use just 10 epochs, just for a, a short example. And here we are doing the um, standard way, so we predict, we get the predictions giving the input from the training data set to the model and we have a loss which is the predictions and the target between uh, we compare the predictions and the target using the loss 
then we use the zero grad, we use the backward, and we use the optimizer uh, step. As you, we are going to see, you know, all PyTorch models. This is just a way to calculate the duration of the optimization, and then we'll move to the evaluation of the model. So again, we will see uh, the loss on the test set calculated. Here, we can save our model. And lastly, we can do some uh, inference. So it will predict an example in the digit uh, test image. And we are going to see what image we are going to infer. And then we want to know what the model predicts. So this is uh, when we run. This was the first part that I showed before. Now we see that we have the shape of the training set. Now it's um, 100 times 784. And we see the shape of the uh, test. And it's 10 and 784. So this is the 28 times 28 pixels. And this is the number of images so we have 100 in the training set and 10 in the testing set here are the losses for uh, the training and we see that it starts at 2.25 and it ends on the last um, 0 0.98 and it took 0 0.1 it's the duration of the uh, optimization so it was very fast and then we are going to uh, give an example. So we, after the model is trained, we take an image, for example, from the, the, the test set. And in this case, the prediction was correct. And here we can see the probabilities of the, all the classes and why it chose three, because we see that this is zero, one, two, three, and three is the largest number of our uh, of the probabilities here so this is this is not uh, actually um, the probabilities because we uh, use this uh, cross entropy so um, the probabilities here they they don't go from zero to one and then don't sum up to one in this case but we could also convert this using, for example, a softmax. Uh, then we would have uh, these as uh, probabilities. And um, so that's, that's it. First, we saw how we would design our model, going through some important points. And here we went through the whole model and saw the results. At this point, we'll test this case uh, of an unknown image. We are using uh, OpenCV and we are generating a random image. So it's uh, 28 pixels by 28 pixels. And we have an um, 8-bit unsigned integer. And we are saving this image. And here we will have two um, types of inference. So first, we will use um, an image from the test set and then we will import this randomly generated image and then we will see what happens when we try to predict so for the first picture it's an image from the the data set it's a three and the prediction is correct three but the second picture is an image that it's uh, we cannot see uh, it's random numbers but the model thinks it's a zero so here we have the output um, the predictions and here what we did we use a softmax function on these predictions and now we have numbers that are probabilities they go from zero to one and they all add up to one and we see that this is zero is the higher probability but we can also put somewhere in the code and we see that if we 
if the model is not confident enough, so if the probability is low, we can see and tell that's probably not a digit. And this is the case here. So we can set a threshold, for example, that uh, if the model thinks uh, has this probability um, of 70% for a certain digit, so we can assume that maybe it is a digit and the model uh, can be correct. But in this case, we have very low probabilities and uh, we can see that's probably not a digit. So that's it. Uh, it's a very simple example. There are many things that we didn't talk about here. There are many things that we just um, passed by very fast, but it's an example, a starting point on using the um, neural networks uh, for classification.